we are doing a four or five parter episode about the best pop songs of all time and we're starting out with uh, with the 80s um, I believe this list started in the 80s that is a bit of a shame because uh, there are some great great uh, songs in the 60s and 70s as well but of course they leave those off because you know it is Miss Mojo um, yeah Miss Mojo great great to look that up that is always amazing um, there's someone on a chair getting water on, on them and people are looking at that and that is the thumbnail um, yeah I'm not sure who that is Maybe Madonna because you know she does weird shit on stage. Kissing Drake, for example, what the fuck? But there we are. Um, yeah, Madonna is a slut. Um, yeah, Madonna is gonna be on the list, unfortunately. Uh, Whitney Houston. I will always love you. That song is gonna be again on the video because Miss Mojo uses that song for every video they ever made so there we are um yeah those two can't name of anything else because my brain is rotting at the moment at watching so many miss mojo videos in this, uh, in a row so there we are don't watch miss mojo that is what i'm saying um but yeah we're going to check out the video I, yeah probably i will always love you is going to be number one because or no actually that is a 90s song so no uh, fortunately that isn't gonna be on the list but it is gonna be on the the next video so we're just gonna check out the video it's gonna be shit but or not maybe but probably will probably I mean the next thumbnail for the 90s is fucking aqua Barbie girl hmm. when disco slowly fell out of fashion mainstream music in the 90s when, when was good when? um I have the tiger. Is is that pop? No, that is rock. That is rock music. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks of the top ten pop songs from the 1980s. For this list, we're looking at the best pop songs. I would put Cindy Lauper on the list, but not um, not girls just want to have fun because that song is overblown. Of the decade, meaning they had to have been. But I would, but I would put her on the list though. Michael Jackson. No. He's gonna be number one. If he isn't, if he isn't number one, there is no hope for this channel. I said it in my previous video, but yeah. There just isn't any hope for this garbage for this garbage channel. Start starting off with a boy band. Great stuff. Wasn't the new Kids on the Block the first boy band ever? That haircut. How to be a fuck boy in the 80s, man. The band's second album, Hanging Tough, proved to be their breakthrough into the mainstream. And the titular single became one of their most popular songs. by Donnie Wahlberg, brother of Marky Mark Wahlberg, the song shot to number one in September of 1989 and became the UK's first number one single of the 1990s. While seemingly tough guys from Boston and boy band music don't necessarily go hand in hand, it's still the it best just way to have starstruck fangirls begging for There's more. There's no denying. Number nine, Footloose, Kenny Loggins. Sounds really cheesy. Well, by Kenny Loggins, Footloose comes from the movie of the same name and is one of two chart topping singles released from the soundtrack. While I'm Free Heaven Helps the Men is a good song, Footloose is on a whole other level entirely. We challenge so. anyone listening to this song to remain stationary. There's just something about it that instantly puts listeners in a good mood. Whether it be the upbeat nature of the music or the carefree get up and dance lyrics. It's easily one of the 
the most recognizable songs from a movie, and it even won the Grammy Award in 1985 for Song of the Year. Not bad at all. Uh, in the air. Yeah. In the air tonight, Phil Collins. He was in such a great prog band and now he does this. Or, well, he did. I believe he doesn't have a solo career as well. Serving as Collins' debut single. What is Phil Collins doing right now? Solo artist, this song I believe he's re retired, but uh, correct me on that if I'm not uh, right. From everyone that he would be just as I believe he is, he is retired. The song has an eerie and dreamlike quality to it that makes the experience unique, mostly stemming from Collins' echoey, reverberating vocal effect. Do 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 also, do let's do not forget do that do classic drum beat that's almost impossible to refrain from drumming in the air like a maniac whenever you hear it. Just maybe not in public. Do 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 do. As the theme song, Flashdance What a Feeling perfectly encapsulates the tone of the movie and the goofiness of the decade, but also works well on its own terms as a fun, upbeat pop song. Winner of a Grammy, a Golden Globe, and an Academy Award, the song was a huge success and reminds us all of how fun and energetic the 80s could be. There's no denying. The 80s is the most cheesy decade of all time. No denying. If you disagree, it isn't valid what you say. It just Number is. Six, hungry like the wolf. Duran Duran. Alexandra. Duran. In the early 80s, British New Wave band Duran Duran hadn't quite made an impact in North America. Then Hungry Like the Wolf and its iconic video caught everyone's attention, and the song became the first international hit. Filmed in the jungle of Sri Lanka, the video was played as much as four times a day on MTV, quickly becoming an instant classic and helping the song reach number three in the United States. It is a really cool video though. The band wrote and recorded the song in one day after playing around with new recording it, it goes from a town to the jungle to some um, uh, to the woods to some really really cu cultural um, some cu cultural sightseeing some in some interesting things to see that I'm trying to say there a yeah, great video Simon the Bond's signature echoey almost robotic vocals I recognize this. Whitney Houston, yeah, Whitney Houston. Number that 80s, that 80s synthesizer. That's, I want to dance with somebody yeah. who loves me, Whitney Houston. And there we go. By 1987, Whitney Houston had already made her mark on the music industry, as her debut album retained the top spot on the Billboard chart for 14 weeks and spun off three number one singles. However, it's this time you don't song you don't get more 80s than when you so you you just don't get it. Well, the 1980s dance pop era the most. Complete with that pop and bassline and Houston's perfect angelic voice, the 
song helped Whitney reach new heights in her career and remains one of her trademark pieces. It became her fourth straight number one in the U.S. It sold over 7 million copies worldwide and won the Grammy for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. In short, this is Whitney at her very best. Wham, great. Up before you go, go. Wham. Great pop music. It does exist. It does exist. Wham, the duo consisting of Andrew Ridgely and George Michael, had an image that was a little moodier than a mainstream audience was ready for. However, with the release of this single, they became much more radio friendly due to the track's bright and colorful tone. by George Michael, the song became the duo's first number one hit in many countries, including the United States, and is known as one of their signature songs today. The lyrics lend themselves nicely to the fun, upbeat music, and we can't Lowest. help ourselves from dancing along. Now, if we can look through Chris Griffin's take on it out of no. our memories. Miss Mojo fucking it up again. I mean, how do you fuck up a great song like that? Use a Family Guy clip. Number three, girls just wanna have fun. Cindy Lauper. <sighs> horrible show, Family Guy. Horrible. I used to like that when when I didn't have much brain cells in there. I'm not saying I do have now, but you know, I know Family Guy is shit now. While Lauper's version was renowned for its feminist approach. This song was actually written and performed Finally discovered it. by a man named Robert Hazard in 1979. I know it was a cover, but After I didn't know about who. But there we are, Robert. Approval, Robert Hazard. Robert's debut single shot her to instant fame. With the help of its classic music video, this song reached the top spot in 10 countries. Two words. Low budgets. Became a feminist anthem. It's an instantly recognizable piece from its very first synthesized notes, and Lopper's energetic vocals carry a sense of fun throughout the entire song while still retaining a powerful stance. It's so cheap. It's a tricky balancing act. If they're gonna make a top ten cheap, uh, cheapest music for you, this is gonna be number one. The Lopper pulls it off. It just is. Creating one of the most memorable songs of the entire decade. Number two, Like a Virgin, Madonna. What would a 1980s list be without Madonna? While Material Girl is always fun to listen to, it's simply a way better list. That, that is what it is. Serving as the lead single from her second album, those lyrics are cringe. Cringe inducing. Like a Virgin became a defining song for young women of the 1980s who hoped to make a statement. And they began imitating the performer, especially in regards to her confident fashion style and aggressive sexuality. It's not only a fun pop song, but a defining piece of 80s culture. Feel so good inside. I'm yeah. Just no. Before we look at our topic, don't think about it. Moments. Just move on. Walk like an Egyptian by the Bengals. I actually thought that this was an a uh, that this was a 90s hit, but. There we are. Before we look at our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. It is a it is a good song, so maybe I'm gonna look at the music video. Maybe pretty interesting, but there we are. Uh, Simple Minds, don't you forget about me. Classic song. 
overused um, and, for, and used for the Breakfast Club. So, yeah. great movie, great song. In Your Eyes by Peter Gabriel. I have reviewed Me uh, or uh, Peter Gabriel 3, so check it out if you will, if you are a Peter Gabriel fan. You know, if you would ask me, Peter Gabriel over Phil, Phil Collins all day every day. Uh, physical by Olivia Newton John. Again, was on the last video as well. Just when she spreads her legs and the camera uh, is on point of view of that, and you can see that's you know one of the worst shots ever. Just is walking on sunshine. Walking on sunshine by Katrina and the waves. Fucking speak the uh, owners. That was fucking well. English, do you speak it? Uh, Electric Youth by Debbie Gibson. Uh, uh, Billie Jean, of course. Best pop song ever. There's no denying. Number one, Billie Jean, Michael Jackson. If you think otherwise. It just isn't, your opinion is invalid. Billie Jean is the greatest pop song of all time. Easy. Trier and Beat It don't even come close. Admit it, even if you're not a fan of Michael Jackson, you love this song. How are you not a fan of Michael Jackson? I mean, how? Billie Jean just screams classic from the title. With the groovy opening notes of the bass transitioning to the sharp sounds of the synthesizer. It's instantly recognizable and insanely memorable. <laughs> Michael commands the song. From the powerful chorus to his signature vocal hiccups spread throughout the song. Such a great song. Floor, Whether it be the stellar the production, rain. Michael himself, the wicked guitar solo, or the confident, dominating lyrics. That isn't a solo, that is a riff, you dipshit. <sighs> if you're covering Billie Jean, then at least get the information right. At least. That is a fucking riff. Even I know that. Often Go considered on. to be one of the best pop songs of all time, Billie Jean is a true yeah, it is. timeless classic. It is the greatest pop song of all time. Arguably one of Michael's greatest achievements. Yeah, it is. <sighs> Miss Mojo is always so obvious about those things. Like you don't know that already. Hehe. <laughs> Eddie Money. For more shredding top tens published Great today, stage now. Be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Oh boy. Fuck boy, that's what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. Horrible list. To, uh, the top two were uh, the Queen and King of Pop. So there we are. And I fucking hate the Queen of Pop. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about it. Um, yeah, the list was shit. Number one was the saving grace, but that is always the Miss Mojo thing. Having an entire shitty list to uh, make the number one spot even better, right? Yeah, but that isn't a good list, Miss Mojo. Le learn from that. Uh, take that top 10 hauntingly beautiful songs and do that again, because that was a good video. But you haven't made that video again. I've watched, I believe, two or three videos after that, and they're all shit. Ah, oh, man, Miss Mojo. Yeah, there's no over the show. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, these are some of the last videos I'm gonna do by Miss Mojo. I'm gonna do the 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and the all time list. And I believe two or three videos more on them. So. Yeah, six, seven more videos by Miss Mojo and then I'm done with this channel. I'm never gonna uh, watch them again because they're garbage. 
And then, and then, then it came music fan requests for more. Um, yeah, uh, but he mainly re requested interesting video topics, not songs like uh, sh to sing under the shower. Not more garbage like that, because that is just a waste of my time. That is just a waste of everybody's time. Um, yeah. So we're just gonna finish out uh, those, and then I'm gonna check out some interesting videos. Interesting videos by them, uh, time by time, here and there. But yeah, probably not gonna enjoy them as well. But hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about it, and take care.